This is an introduction to a wide range of capabilities and expertise available in our state-of-the-art Advanced Materials Laboratory facility here at CPI, particularly in the area of incorporating nanomaterials into new products and processes. Nanomaterials are any material, either synthetic or naturally occurring, which have particulates in the size range of 1 to 100 nanometers a nanometer being a billionth of a meter. Nanomaterials come in all shapes and sizes, be it spherical, rod-shaped, two-dimensional sheets, and even my personal favorites, tubular nanomaterials, such as carbon nanotubes. When materials are available on a nanoscale, a whole array of new opportunities open up to scientists and engineers to develop new products and processes. These include materials with enhanced electrical conductivity for printed electronic applications, materials with enhanced thermal conductivity, which dissipate heat in computers, allowing them to run at faster speeds. There's materials with extraordinary semiconducting properties, which enable us to store increasing amounts of digital data in ever decreasing volumes of space. There's also stronger materials such as composites for use in automotive applications that can also be lightweighted, meaning fuel savings and steps towards net zero targets. Packaging materials with enhanced barrier properties can also be produced using nanomaterials, meaning we can use less packaging to keep your chicken fresher for longer. These properties and enhanced materials and products derived from them allow us to pursue applications across almost every market sector you can think of, including electronics, automotive, energy, aerospace, FMCG, etc. Here at CPI, we are extremely fortunate to be able to work with and draw on the expertise of hundreds of scientists and engineers, many of whom have decades of experience across corporate industry, in the SME sector, and from academia. In particular, in the Advanced Materials Nanoprocessing Facility, we have access to up to 50 scientists and engineers working across the wider formulation science ecosystem here at CPI. Many of these colleagues have decades of experience in coatings, paints, inks, polymer materials, colloids, nanomaterial production and scale-up, process technology, high throughput formulation, and many other such areas. Scale is an extremely important consideration in all we do here in this facility. Not only are we operating at the extremes of science and engineering by developing products and process at the nano scale, we are also constantly mindful of the scale at which new products and processes may ultimately be produced or implemented. By that I mean how much of this stuff or how many of these things can we make and for how much? Partners and clients typically come to us to try out a new product or process before they make investment decisions around scaling up the production of said product. By coming to us early in the process, CPI can enable you to make more informed decisions not only about how you might scale up the production of your new nanomaterial containing products, but also helps clients and partners understand the potential economic risks and rewards associated with seeking to enter a particular market segment with a brand new nanomaterial containing product. In the Advanced Materials Nanoprocessing Facility here at CPI, we typically perform a series of three or, or four primary steps in taking new nanomaterials through a product development pathway from, from raw material powders to final products and prototypes. That, that allows us to assess the given nanomaterials performance in, in a given application. Paramount in the, in the stepwise process that we follow is safe handling of nanomaterials, for which we are particularly well enabled in our facility here in Sedgefield. Once we have ensured safe handling of the nanomaterials we work with, this is typically followed by steps such as nanomaterial functionalization, nanomaterial dispersion, and crucially, characterization of nanomaterials, including characterizing raw nanomaterial powders, the structure and stability of intermediate dispersions, and also final products or prototypes containing nanomaterials. Having ascertained the efficacy of a given nanomaterial in an application, we then routinely work with clients and partners to enable them to scale up the production of optimized nanomaterials towards carefully targeted market areas. Safety is the number one consideration in everything we do at CPI. 
In particular, when handling what are often brand new nanomaterials, it is critical that we handle them in such a way that no direct exposure occurs between the nanomaterials themselves and lab users, our clients, partners, and visitors. It goes without saying that safe handling followed by appropriate regulation of nanomaterials is crucial in ensuring their full market adoption and allowing us to realize the full range of extraordinary properties that they no doubt hold. Many partners come to CPI to work with us on the journey of understanding the necessary requirements to safely handle and control nanomaterials in their own facilities before making decisions around infrastructure spends and internal protocols that will allow them to do the same with increased confidence. In ensuring CPI can act as an exemplar of best practice in handling nanomaterials safely, we have worked closely with colleagues in the Institute of Occupational Medicine, the IOM, conducting regular monitoring of our air handling and nanocontainment facilities, such as our nano glove box, our downflow booths, and state-of-the-art respiratory PPE. We routinely engineer the surface of nanomaterials to better match their compatibility with the materials into which we're aiming to incorporate them. For example, um, if we're trying to incorporate a nanomaterial into a new ink, we may modify the surface of the nanomaterial such that it is more miscible with the primary solvent system used in that ink. One particularly efficient means of modifying the nanomaterial surface is via a low temperature plasma process here at CPI. Functionalizing nanomaterials in this way has many benefits, including it being a one-step process, a dry process, um, and a process which requires no further purification after functionalization. Understanding how to optimally disperse a given nanomaterial into a given coating, ink, or polymer matrix system is, is crucial in realizing the full extent of properties that these materials have to offer. For, for certain applications, full deagglomeration of nanomaterials into individual particles is required for best results, um, especially if you're aiming to maintain optical transparency of a product, for example. In other applications, agglomerates themselves are, are advantageous. Indeed, it has been shown in some instances that full dispersion initially, followed by a little agglomeration later as a coating or, or polymer cures, is sometimes the best approach. In essence, whether you undermix overmix or just get it right is critical to realizing the full benefits of these materials in many applications. Regardless of the end goal of dispersion, here at CPI we have access to a range of dispersion techniques which allow us to, to traverse the, the various shear requirements, that is the mixing strengths or speeds needed to optimally disperse your nanomaterial into your product. These include triple roll mills, planetary mixers and, and high shear mixers to name but a few. So there are many points in the process of incorporating nanomaterials into new products and processes whereby materials characterization and analysis is, is essential. At CPI, we have access to a broad suite of characterization techniques allowing us to follow every step in the product development process. Even more importantly, however, it's our scientists and engineers, the experts in using this capability, that they're able to collect and interpret the data in, in such a way that allows our clients and partners better understand the effects of incorporating nanomaterials into their products or processes. So thermal conductivity measuring equipment here at CPI allows us to quickly and accurately measure the improved ability of a material or a fluid um, to remove heat quickly from an area where it may be causing harm. For example, where heat may be reducing component lifetimes or slowing down your computer chip. Heat dissipation is a very common requirement of many of our clients and customers, particularly those working in the areas of lubricants, coolants, power transmission and electronics. Electrical conductivity measurements are also a common requirement for, for many of the new materials we help clients and partners develop. Amongst many techniques available to us in this area, we routinely measure powder resistivity, for example, of nanomaterials. That allows us to better understand how electrical conductivity changes under compression. We also measure bulk electrical conductivity of, for example, polymer, polymeric components targeting electrostatic dissipation applications, such as lightning strike protection. Um, sheet resistant measurements are also routinely performed at this facility to help us understand the effect of adding nanomaterials to thin films or coatings used in applications such as flexible dis display screens. 
Mechanical characterization of materials after we incorporate nano additives is, is usually essential also in the work we do here at CPI. Sometimes we perform tests to ascertain whether we have improved the mechanical performance, um, for example, adhesion to a particular substrate. Um, other times we perform tests to ensure that we've not actually detrimentally affected mechanical performance. Sometimes you might be um, targeting barrier performance as your, as your primary goal, but you have to make sure that you don't impact mechanical strength also. Um, typical mechanical performance tests here at CPI span from tribological measurements such as wear, friction, abrasion analysis. We also do adhesion analysis, hardness tests using our nano indentation equipment, or perhaps more widely known tensile strength measurements of, of plastics and, and fiber-based composites on, a, on, a, on our Instrum machine. So we have access to a range of spectroscopy-based characterization techniques here at CPI. Um, one such technique which is particularly relevant to nanomaterial characterization is Raman spectroscopy. Information can be garnered from Raman spectroscopy on structure, morphology, number of layers and defects within nanomaterials, allowing us to compare and contrast nanomaterials at the molecular level. Diffraction techniques of all types are also particularly relevant in, in characterizing both raw nanomaterials and those pro products in which they're contained. Um, here at CPI, uh, X-ray diffraction is one such technique which we routinely employ while we're characterizing the nanomaterials we work with. Um, X-ray diffraction is particularly useful, for example, in understanding the, the size of spacings, typically sub-nanometer spacings in this instance, between the layers that make up many of the 2D nanomaterials that we work with. Understanding even the, the subtlest of changes in spacings between layers is critical to the types of materials we are seeking to develop, particularly, for example, if you're relying on that spacing to be optimized in, in such a way that it stops one molecule but doesn't stop another slightly larger molecule in, in an application such as a barrier application or a separation application. Imaging nanoparticles such that we can actually see how they're structured and arranged at the nano scale is, is, is incredibly helpful to us in designing new products and processes. Our state-of-the-art microscopy equipment allows us to do just that. With all the required equipment for sample preparation and, and imaging available on site, we regularly employ scanning electron microscopy and atomic force microscopy to understand morphology, structure and dispersion at the nanoscale. These techniques are ably supported by other microscopy techniques such as confocal microscopy and more routine optical microscopy for assessing larger structures and materials. As outlined, um, our work here at this facility in CPI involves the incorporation of a wide range of, of nanomaterials into, into new products and processes for a variety of market applications. Um, one recent project of note involved the development of a screen printable electrically conductive ink for a sensing application. Um, key to this requirement was for us to develop a thorough understanding of the structure and stability of the nanoparticle ink such that the same print quality was achieved after the thousandth or even the hundred thousandth printed sensor compared to the first. This required optimized rheological strengthening of the ink such that it was robust enough to withstand a large number of printing passes without losing performance or, or stability, while at the same time remaining sufficiently printable such that economically efficient print speeds could be maintained. This was achieved using many of the characterization techniques discussed here. Other projects of note include those in the area of thermal conductivity enhancements, from initially working with partners to understand supply chains, production scales and costings for these types of additives, we've worked in numerous projects to develop novel coatings and polymeric materials that enable heat dissipation through for many applications, thus enabling more efficient power transmission, faster electronics and cooling during the operation of high temperature machines. Having a state-of-the-art facility that specializes in nanomaterials means we can address your product and process development needs with advanced approaches. Brand new buildings, world-class equipment and a cohort of very knowledgeable colleagues and an enthusiastic team means we can apply the latest knowledge to your project.